Buckingham Palace, a special message from Her Majesty the Queen. Him, him, him. As you may have heard, we at Buckingham Palace are experiencing a slight problem with mice. Is, this place has more rodents than a Law Society cocktail party. But we're doing our best to cope with this nasty situation. Hmm. Looks a bit like John Nunziata with whiskers. Nevertheless, we're making every effort to rid the palace of these horrid creatures. I say, what's this then? Maybe I shouldn't have put that mousetrap in Philip's pants. <laughs> to deal with our problem, I have enlisted Charles's help. He's upstairs right now, chatting with the rodents and boring them to death. Ooh. Ooh. It appears to be working. It's not like this is our first pest problem. We recently got rid of quite a pudgy little rat. The mice should prove no problem. Ooh. One appears to be crawling up my leg as we speak. <sighs> Rather reminds me of my honeymoon. <laughs> Many of you must be thinking, how can I help? Simple. Send money. <laughs> we can't afford a proper exterminator. We blew all our savings on divorce settlements. We are so broke, instead of getting a new yacht, we're scaling down our water transportation requirements. <laughs> Send your checks to the HLGRLB fund. Help Liz get rid of the little buggers. <laughs> Give now. The queen you save may be your own. <laughs> oh, dear. Tone News. ELO leader Yasser Arafat and Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu get together to figure out how to spell each other's names. The bitter enemies meet at the White House in an attempt to salvage the Middle East peace process. World Report with Tarquin Newton Fig. Good evening, at least where you are in the colonies. Where I am, it's one o'clock in the morning. <laughs> the big story in Canada is the Somalia inquiry, and the chief witness has been the Canadian Chief of Staff, General Jean Boyle, who joins us now from Ottawa. Well, General Boyle, being a fighter pilot, I suppose this sortie has been tally-ho, wizard show, chocks away, wheels up, and foot to the firewall on the old kite, eh? <laughs> or not, as the case may be. Now, I gather you've been accused of being slow to pass on information. Uh, 
that's correct. But if you found the missing documents, you'd rush to give them to the inquiry, would you not? Yes. But you've been accused of covering up. I spoke from the heart. Well, some say you were speaking from another part of the anatomy. I take exception to that. Well, what do you say to those who think you've started to lose your marbles? Some appear to have gotten lost, yes. Jim, who altered the documents? I have no idea. Then who lost the documents? I have no idea. How do you tell your ass from your elbow? I have no idea. Well, General, I'd like to thank you for your honesty and outspokenness. I'd like to, but I'd be lying. And that's it from the BBC World Report. I'm Nancy Wilson, and I'm wearing very tight shoes. <laughs> the federal government has finally released the Royal Commission's report on Aboriginal peoples. It cost $58 million, took five years to write, and will be forgotten in five days. <laughs> My guest is Native People spokesman Billy Two Willies. He joins me from his traditional ancestral home. Guess what? Blackjack, house wins. <laughs> Hello, Nancy. Uh, Mr. Two Willies, uh, what do you think of this 4,000-page document? Well, like, I could have said the same thing in five words. <laughs> what is the Native people's position? Well, I was talking about this very point last night with my wife, eh? Buffy say, not tonight, I have a headache. <laughs> She said, we must be allowed to return to our hereditary roots, hunting, fishing, and smuggling cigarettes. Uh, Mr. Two Willies, do you think the government of Canada will grant Native people self-rule? It'd be worth it just to get Lucien Bouchard pissed off. Do you think you'll win all your land claims? Well, probably not, eh? But we insist on ownership of several sacred burial sites. Where are they? West Edmonton Mall, the Toronto Eaton Centre, Plasville Marie, the Calgary Tower, and Vancouver. <laughs> Mr. Two Willies, before we go, your final thoughts? Okay. On this historic occasion, I am reminded of the words of the ancient elder of our band, he said, Billy, when the cloud is in the sky and the deer jumps over the fallen tree, that is the best time to play the 649. What exactly does that mean? I don't know, but I won 20 bucks last Saturday. <laughs> Do you know me? I'm Dolly, the clone sheep you've been hearing about. <laughs> Scientists were quite surprised when I showed up. They thought they were cloning a sweater. <laughs> cloning sheep was an incredible scientific breakthrough. It's created a lot more job opportunities for shepherds. But it does pose a frightening moral dilemma. If they can clone sheep, What's to stop them from cloning Don Cherry? <laughs> cloning does take some of the fun out of reproduction. No more, you know, horizontal sheep mambo. No more ram bam, thank you, lamb. <laughs> but as for me, my future looks pretty good. I've already signed a book deal, and I'm set to appear on Oprah, and I am dating Prince Andrew. <laughs> For a clown sheep, that's not bad. <laughs> At what point, then, will we put into effect 
the plans of our leader to release our bodies from their earthly containers so they may roam to the spaceship trailing in the wake of the comet hail bop and thereby attain a higher plane of consciousness, even if we are only the Canadian chapter. <laughs> they've promised to phone us from San Diego the minute they've been successful. If they've been successful, how will they be able to phone us? Shouldn't we make our act distinctly Canadian? We're waiting instructions from the United States. What could be more Canadian than that? <laughs> Any questions, now is the time to ask them. When our spirits leave our body and go to the celestial spacecraft, will we still have to go to the bathroom? No. That's a bit unhealthy, isn't it? I'm going now. Hello? Oh, no. No, really, no. No. No, no, no. No, a year's subscription to the Globe and Mail would be wasted on us. It's something like that that brings home the reality of it. We won't be here for the next year. At least. Do you think being Canadian got us into this? How do you mean? Well, by the end of winter, most Canadians are suicidal. What are you suggesting? That we not go through with this? Well, no. But our philosophy is that the world is doomed and that we will be rescued by the chosen few. And we must trust the chosen few and follow them blindly with no hope of worldly success, obeying what they say without questioning, even though you think the leader is a bit nuts. Where in Canada is there an organization we can join that works on those principles? Of course. The, the Reform, Reform Party! Party. in the banking industry are dedicated to one honorable principle, making as much money as possible off the backs of others less fortunate. <laughs> Recently, one of the other major banks, whose name I will not mention, <laughs> ran a controversial ad campaign many found offensive. The ad featured a Bob Dylan composition sung off-key by people, many of them children, wandering through farmer's fields for no apparent reason. It was a blatant commercialization of a popular singer's music to attract customers. We at the Scotiabank would never stoop to such cheap tactics. Ladies and gentlemen, Rita McNeil. If you're a working man and need service, there's no call to be nervous. The Scotiabank fills your every wish. Open a new account and get a free fish. I'm Hannah Gartner, broadcast journalist with a really neat buzz cut. <laughs> the foundations of Canada's stock markets have been shaken by news from the gold exploration company known as Brex. <laughs> Brex. Two weeks ago, the company had a net worth of $5 billion. Today, its shares are trading on a par with Canadian tire money. <laughs> Joining me is a member of the Brex board of directors who appears on the condition his identity not be revealed. Hello, Mr. X. No need to be formal, honey. You can call me Bree. <laughs> I'm here to be totally honest and open. In that case, why do you insist on being anonymous? Well, it's not so much being anonymous as it is I just don't want anybody to know who I am. <laughs> you see, if my true identity were known, it could undermine Bree X's recovery at... Has Briex found a huge gold deposit or not? I will admit there is some uncertainty concerning our core samples, but we have made a point. What, what are you What are you... What are you... What are you...
you saying? There's no gold in the core samples? Oh, there's plenty of gold, all right. We just have no idea where the samples come from. <laughs> all right, bottom line. What does the future hold for Briex and executives like yourself? Well, I'd love to answer you, Hannah, but I'm sorry, my break is over. Hello? Welcome to Walmart. You find the hardware down on the third aisle. The focus of your deal. All right, Brian Williams here. And you know, folks, when I'm not busy covering sports on TV, there's nothing I like better than watching myself covering sports on TV. <laughs> And you know, folks, now you can too with this exciting new video featuring highlights of the 1996 Atlanta.